silence before him. The songwriter, the, the, the uh, writer said, this is the day that the Lord had made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. You know, I don't know about you, but sometimes, do you ever just have to steal away and actually think about how good God had been to you? Not your neighbor, not your, not somebody else, but to you. You, you may not have all that you want. You may not feel the best you, you want to feel, but you still find time to come to the church. And I wish I had about two or three more witnesses here that in spite of what I'm going through, in spite of how I feel, I still find myself in the house of prayer on Sunday morning. And the reason I want to be here because I, I need to be encouraged because somebody told me this is a spiritual hospital and I've been sick all week long. And I, I don't know about you, y'all excuse me now, but when I came here, I, 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 you, you might want to move off your row or you might want to tell your folks somebody needs to slide down a little bit on my row because I came here this morning to give him praise because you don't know like I know what the Lord had done for me. For when they say I was no good, God picked me up. Oh God, we help me now. When they said I never would amount to anything, God said, trust me. And David said, and the twin they said, Psalm, he said, look now, the Lord is. And I need some folks who just need the Lord to be something for them. Yeah, if you need him to be a rock in a thirsty land, if you need him for water, he'll be that to you. If you need him as a doctor in a sick room, if you need him as a lawyer in a courtroom, he'll be that to you. I'm not telling you what I heard. I'm telling you what I know. How do you know, Reverend? Tried him. I've tried him. And when I say I tried him, I, I don't mean I, I, I read about him. You, you know, when you got to go to the doctor, you got to sit down and tell them what's wrong. But there's something about him when he comes to your room in the morning. He already knows. He, he don't need your vital sign. He is your vital sign. God bless you. There's nothing else that needs to be said at this time But how great is our God The splendor of a king The splendor
Our Father, which are in heaven, we come this morning once again, as humble as we know, to say thank you, Father, for watching over us last night as we slept and slumbered. And God, early this morning, Father, you touched us with a finger of love. Father, we thank you for that. And God, we come at this time asking that you would have mercy on all of us. God, we ask that you would have mercy on all the auxiliaries. Yes, sir. And God, we just thank you for being so good to us. Yes, Jesus. And Lord, this morning, this morning, Father, I've come to say thank you. Yes, Lord. Lord, I was at this same church when I turned 50. Very happy, very happy, Father. And then, God, you let me saw 20 more good years. Thank you, Father. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. And, God, there's just so much that we can say thank you, Father. But, Lord, we don't have enough tongues to tell you how thankful we are. So, God, we just take this moment right here and say hallelujah, thank you, Father, for being so good to us. And God, we didn't gather at this place of worship for no fashion or for show. God, we came because we need you. We need your mercy and grace. And God, we, we thank you for just letting us be able to see another day that we've never seen. You've given us another chance to come and try to get it right. And with your help, Lord, I know we'll get it right. Jesus, there's just so much going on in this world that, Lord, it, it scares you sometimes. Killing. People being so ruthless to each other. There appear to be no more love in the world. I did say it appears because I know there is love in the world. Yes, sir. God, we, we, we thank you, Lord, for just being real good to us. And Lord, you know what is on my heart. And I may not be at this moment able to express it. Lord, be with all of us. Lord, teach all of us how to love one another, not just talk about it, Father, but actually that we start doing it. Lord, please help all of us. Lord, be merciful to us. Lord, be merciful to this nation. Wars and wars. Everywhere we turn around, wars and wars. Different political parties lying to each other, lying about one another. God, help us to make the right decision and do the right thing. Thank you, Father. We all pray for all help and strength. Oh, Lord, just be with us, Lord. Show us the way, Lord. Teach us how to truly, truly love one another, Father. God, please just be with us, Lord. Lord, have mercy. I know I've said it over and over, but please, Father, have mercy on all of us. Order our steps, Father. Teach us how to put our arms around each other even when we have failed and done the wrong thing. And as Christian Father, we're not supposed to criticize one another. We're supposed to love one another and say, it's okay, I still love you. Lord, please be with us. 
And oh God, create in us a clean heart and renew a righteous spirit within us. And oh Lord, when it's all over with for us down here on earth, Lord, we ask that you have a seat in your kingdom for us. This prayer, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. star peace blessings and love to everyone my name is Anita Jamison and I welcome you to morning star if we have any visitors in the house at this time I'm asking that you please stand amen amen if there are visitors on our social media please hit click love like and share ma'am we thank you for joining us today welcome if you're without a church home, we welcome you to unite here with us at Morning Star. Thank you so much for choosing us today, and please come again. You may be seated. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Have a blessed day in the Lord, Morning Star.
just a little more praise. If you don't know that's who he is, then I encourage you to get to know him because he is that and more. God, our Father, we come in Jesus' name. Lord, we love you. We thank you, O oh God, from whom all of 
I bless his flow. God, we even recognize that every good and perfect gift comes from the up above, oh God. Oh God, we ask this morning that you would forgive us of our sins and our trespasses. And oh God, uh, we desire a word from heaven. Feed us, Lord Jesus, till we won't no more, oh God. Let our cups overflow with your goodness and with your grace, oh God, and with your mercy, oh God. God, uh, I pray that we'll see you closer and that we will draw closer and closer to you. For we ask it all, Father, in the name of he that is able. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. This morning, our scripture lesson is coming from uh, the book of Isaiah, uh, chapter 41. Chapter 41. If you would, uh, for your hearing this morning, I just want to read verse 10. Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10. And it simply states, <laughs> Isaiah 41, verse 10. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with my right hand of righteousness. Amen. Thus ended the reading. You may be seated in his presence. The grass withered and the flower faded, but the word of our God shall stand forever. <clears throat> For just a few minutes this morning, y'all, I want to borrow from the choir this morning. I want to talk about a way maker, the way maker. And uh, in that song, there are four pieces that are pointed out. One declares that he is a way maker. The second declares that he's a miracle worker. The third promise is that God is a promise keeper. And then that he's a God in the light. God is the light in darkness. Amen. Now, for the rest of this month, I'm going to be using uh, this as a background for our, uh, for our sermons. Uh, but today, I want to look at God is a promise keeper. God is a promise keeper. Word of God uh, makes these declarations, these statements that affirm that God is with us. He constantly shares throughout uh, the word of God that the closeness that God has with his children. Uh, the book of Isaiah, uh, Isaiah is written, uh, some of the theologians call it a miniature Bible. Uh, when you read the book of Isaiah, because the first uh, 39 uh, uh, books uh, deals with God in light of the Old Testament, in the light of Israel. Uh, but uh, chapters 20, uh, chapters 40 and above look at God in the New Testament. And uh, as, as God gives him in his prophetic eyes, of what to say even before it ever happens. Matter of fact, in chapter 41, uh, Isaiah is prophesying based upon what he declares in chapter 40. And he declares in chapter 40, comfort ye my people. He says that I want to bring comfort unto my people. And he says this, y'all, even before anything ever happens that they needed comfort for. He recognized that some hundred years later that they will be called into 
uh, uh, captivity by the Babylonians, and, and they will remain there for some 70 years. And he's writing even before it happens to let you know that there's something about the promises of God that will never change. And he writes in this text, uh, uh, in, in, in this uh, 41 chapter, he lifts up this whole idea of who the Lord is and what the Lord will do on our behalf. And even though he writes this in a declaration, even before it happens, he says that when you feel defeated, when you feel trapped, when you feel exhausted, God is a way maker. When you don't see your way through, God is a miracle worker. And when you don't know how to trust anymore, God is a promise keeper. When everything around you looks dark, he says God is a light in darkness. And I just come to encourage somebody this morning that the God we serve, he is a way maker. And he says in chapter 41, verse 10, he says, fear not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God, for I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help ye. Yea, I will uphold you with my right hand. And what he says in this text ought to give us encouragement this morning because what he says is that the Lord will never lose those to whom belong to him. And we could say it also because God is here we shall not fear because of the presence of God. And I don't care what you're going through, how long you've been there. If you're there and you belong to God, God is there with you. God doesn't have to take you out. God can meet you right where you are. Listen, my brothers and sisters, there are a few things he lifts up in this verse. And if you pray with me, I'll be uh, done very shortly here. But uh, there are two commandments, he says. He says, number one, do not be afraid. He says, whatever you did with, don't panic. You, you make poor decisions when you're in panic mode. And he says, whatever you do, don't be afraid. He told those disciples on the, uh, on, on, on the sea as they tossed to and fro. He said, don't be afraid. But then he says, don't not be dismayed. That is, don't be discouraged. And my brothers and sisters, sometimes when you read the headlines, it's discouraging. Sometimes when you pick up Facebook and, 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 and you read uh, what's going on, it can be discouraging. But listen, what he challenges us with, whatever you do, do not fear and do not be dismayed. But then he says, there are two things that you ought to do. He says, you ought to go ahead because, number one, I'm with you. Oh, blessed be God. Listen, it makes a difference when you know that God is there, when you, when you know that he is with you. And then secondly, he says, you can be obedient because you know I am your God. Listen, my brothers and sisters, not the man upstairs, uh, not your spiritualist power. He says, but I am your God. I'm what you need for every moment of your life. Uh, but then he makes three promises. Uh, he says, number one, I will strengthen you. And I don't know about you, but somebody needs strength this morning. <laughs> Facing something you don't know how to handle tomorrow. But listen, I just come to encourage you. God will strengthen you in the process. But then he says, I will help you. But finally, he says, I will uphold you with my right hand. He tells us what not to do. He says, number one, just don't be afraid. Don't be dismayed. Don't lie all of the stuff you see to climb over the view of me. And listen, my brothers and sisters, sometimes we got to move some stuff out of the way. Sometimes we've got to bow down under God and trust him. Bible says, trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not to thine own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. My brothers and sisters, he says, number one is because God is with me. Notice what he does not say. He does not say um, that he, uh, he 
if you do right, I'll show up. He does not say that if you never sin, I may not be there. But what he says is, I will be with you through, through sickness and health, through pitfalls and missteps. He promises to be with us. But listen, my brothers and sisters, he says, do not, do not fear, do not be afraid. Uh, he says, because my presence, I promise to be with you. Exodus 13 and 14 says, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. Uh, and my brothers and sisters, sometimes life can throw us in somersaults that we're running this way and we're running that way. But oh, if you rely on God, uh, listen to him, not just say, if you just lean upon him, listen, God will give you through it and he'll give you rest in the process. Uh, the text says, uh, he declares uh, to the psalmist, uh, psalmist says that all that I want and all that I need, but the psalmist in Psalm 23, 4 says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadows of death, I will fear no evil. Why, David? Because thou art with me. And I want to argue, my brothers and sisters, Jesus makes this proclamation when the disciples see him about to ascend up into heaven and he declares unto them, Lo, I'll be with you always, even until the end of the earth. And what this means is yet, yet not that God is always in the presence of it because some folks think that God is always in But what God says he literally is if you go into Chicago, I'll be with you all the way. You may not always see me. You may not always see my things. But listen, you got to know if you're going, I'm with you. Yeah. He argued. He argues in this text that, that I am with you. But then he says, be not dismayed because he is my God. And I want to argue, my brothers and sisters, it makes a difference when you learn in your own relationship, not just he's God, uh, but that he's my God. Uh, that becomes personal for you. When you made a personal commitment to him, he makes a commitment to you. And listen, he says that he's my God. Sam, uh, Samuel uh, 36 says that David was distressed because the men were talking about and stoning him. Uh, but they changed when they found out that the Lord that he found strength in the Lord, his God. I would argue, my brothers and sisters, every now and then, listen, you got to run to the rock. You got to run to the place that is able to help you in the time of storm. Listen, I heard, I heard the hymnologist says, be not dismayed. Whatever betide, God will take care of you. Beneath his wings of love abide, God will Take care of you. One of those other verses says, no matter what may be the test, God will take care of you. Lean weary one upon his breast. God will take care of you. I just want to encourage somebody that God is a keeping God. God will be with us even when everything else have turned the opposite of us. God will be. Listen, I can understand why the writer of this song declares that he is a way maker because he keeps his promises. If he declares it, it shall come to pass. But listen, my brothers and sisters, I will not have you to live in fear. I will not have you to be dismayed because God's promises is that he will be with me and that he will be my God. But thirdly, he says that I will lean on God to strengthen me. I love uh, uh, Cory Boone uh, wrote a number of books and, and, uh, and she talks about the Lord gives strength to his people. And the Lord blesses his people with peace. And I would argue, my brothers and sisters, thanks be to God for the word of God that he not only blesses us, but he gives us peace in the midst of us. And I would argue, my brothers and sisters, uh, the writer here uh, looks at the idea that God will strengthen us. And I would argue, my brothers and sisters, uh, I, can't, I can't declare for you, but I can 
testify for myself that there have been moments in life uh, when I didn't know how I was going to get it through. Uh, but God didn't change my circumstances. He just strengthened me in the process of it. And I want to argue, my brothers and sisters, sometimes it's an inward stability. Sometimes it's an inward thing that God is working in and through us. Well, listen, my brothers and sisters, I, my fourth point is that I will trust God to help me. For the Bible says that, that not only will he strengthen me, but the text says, I will help you. Hebrews 13 and 6 says, So we say with confidence that the Lord is my helper, and I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? Listen, my brothers and sisters, I would argue that because of the God we serve, I know that he will help me. And listen, y'all, sometimes when our friends and our, our cohorts, they, they love us when everything is going well. They, they're excited when, when, when we can do for them and that kind of thing. But, but what happens when you get in trouble? Listen, listen, I want to argue. I'm so glad I serve a God that won't block me because I messed up. I'm so glad that I serve a God that won't turn back on me when I'm in trouble. But he comes he comes when I call upon him because he wants to help me. But listen, y'all, if you're going to say amen, you better say it now because I'm at my last point now. I would argue, my brothers and sisters, he says, I believe not only will God strengthen me, I believe that God will not only help me, but he says God will uphold me. And I want to argue at this point, y'all, is that God is an upholding God. He is one that will grab hold of us. And every now and then, y'all, listen, sometimes you need God to be over you. Sometimes you need God to be around you. Sometimes you need God to be in you. But oh, sometimes, y'all, I need God to lift me up to where he wants me to be. And listen, I serve a God that is a strong and mighty God. The Bible says it doesn't even take two hands. He says, with my right hand, I'll lift you up. I will uphold you. Oh, my brothers and sisters, I'm going, going to my seat when I tell y'all, thanks be to God that we serve a God, that he goes to the deep when I'm in the deep. He goes in my mess when I'm in the mess, but he'll bring me up out of. My brothers and sisters, I would argue, I would argue, I serve a God, I serve a God, y'all, that will not only help me, not only strengthen me, but he will uphold me. And I'm so glad, y'all, that we have a God that, that will go with us, go above us and over us, go beside and around us, go, go inside, uh, but yeah, he will stand with us. But oh, my brothers and sisters, I would argue, I would argue this, y'all. I believe that's the reason why the hymnologist declared uh, in that old song of the church, I've seen the lightning flashing and I've heard the thunder rolling. I've heard the, uh, I've seen sins breaking dash, which almost conquered my soul. But I heard the voice of my Savior bidding me still to fight on. He promised never to leave me, never to leave me alone. No, never, never alone. No, never alone. He promised never to leave me. He promised never to leave me alone. I'm so glad, my brothers and sisters, that we serve a God that no matter what our situations may be, that he will never leave us alone. Look, I'll tell you this story now, and I'm, I'm done, y'all. Story told of a little boy and the family. They were woken up in the middle of the night by a smoke detector. Middle of the night, they discovered that the house was on fire. And the father ran upstairs. He went into the bedroom and he grabbed hold of his little 18 month old baby, put her in one hand, and then he grabbed his four year old son and he took them and dragging them down the stairs so he could save them from the fire. And in the midst of his haste, his little son recognized that he left, yeah, 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 his dinosaur in the bed. And so he ripped his hand from his father's head and he ran up to get his dinosaur. And when he got there, 
he recognized that the room was filled with smoke and he didn't see his way out. Father made it downstairs only to realize that his little four-year-old boy was no longer with him. And, uh, and he runs aside, he gives the baby over, and the little boy is standing in the window by this time, and he's crying out to his dad, Father, Father, help me. And dad look at him, and, and he says, Son, just jump. He says, he said, Daddy, the problem is I can't, I can't see you. How can I jump? Daddy, help me. He says, son, just jump. He said, but daddy, I can't see you. Daddy said, you can't see me, but I can see you. <laughs> oh, my brothers and sisters, sometimes we find ourselves smothering smoke all around us, and we're crying out to God, God, help me, help me. And listen, sometimes it seems like you can't see God. But I come to declare to somebody, God sees you. <laughs> he knows where you are. He knows what you stand in need of. And I declare he's a promise keeper. He will keep his word. His word is truth. <laughs> and I declare if you trust him, and the Bible says that if you will confess with your mouth, believe in your heart the Lord Jesus Christ uh, that, that he hung bled and died on yonder's Calvary's cross but early the third day morning he rose from the grave with all power of heaven in, in his heart. If we recognize the fact that God was, that Jesus was raised from the dead, the Bible says thou shalt be saved. And I would argue my brothers and sisters, that's not John Johnson, that's the Bible. And listen, if you trust his word today, if you trust him as your Lord and Savior, I declare he'll make your life brand new. Listen, I hadn't seen, it hadn't heard, nor has it entered the heart of me, the things that the Lord has in store for you. But listen, my brothers and sisters, he wouldn't push himself on you. He makes the appeal. It's up to you to choose him today. God, our Father. We come in Jesus' name. We love you. We thank you. We praise you. Oh, God, uh, I pray that something said or done across this service will inspire and encourage and lift up somebody. Oh, God, and maybe there is somebody that does not know you as the Lord and Savior. Maybe they don't know you as a helper. They don't know you as one who's able to strengthen you. They don't know him, you as one that will uphold you. God, be that God for them today, oh God. Oh God, as they've searched so many other ways, let them know that their only hope is found in you, oh God. Speak now, God. Oh God, draw us nearer and nearer to thee. And we'll be faithful to give you glory, to give you honor, and to give you praise. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. The door of the church is open. I invite you to come by letter. Christian experience candidate for baptism. Listen, you don't have to fix yourself right, make yourself. Listen, just as you are, if you will surrender your life to him, trust him that he'll make your life brand new. This invitation is extended to you. Won't you come? Won't you surrender your life to him today?
to depart this morning. I ask that you would uh, remember Deacon Connor Ketchins, and I ask that you remember Deacon Rayford Robinson, uh, a senior, in your prayers on this morning. Uh, I ask that you remember Brother Samuel uh, in a very special way this morning, and uh, I ask that you would remember the the Durr family. Uh, brother, uh, Sister Durr passed on this weekend. Uh, services will be here on Saturday at 11 o'clock, Saturday at 11 a.m., and we invite you to come and share with that family uh, in their, their time of bereavement. <clears throat> Are there any other prayer requests this morning? Yes, ma'am. Glory. Sugar. Amen. 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 Thanks be to God that when we can't get there, he's already there. Amen. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Amen. God, our Father, we come in the name of Jesus, God. We thank you for all our eyes have seen, all our ears have heard. We thank you for the sweet communion of your Holy Spirit. And, oh, God, I ask now, oh, God, that you would, oh, God, be with us, oh, God, uh, even in sicknesses, oh, God. We know that you're able to heal all manner of disease, oh, God. And so, God, I pray for my sister's daughter, oh, God, right now, oh, God, uh, you know where she is. You know what she's standing in need of. And, oh, God, intervene in a mighty, mighty way, oh, God. God, I lift up Brother Samuel Hornsby to you, oh, God, and touch his body, oh, God, as only you can strengthen and uphold him, oh, God. And, God, I, I lift up, oh, God, Sister Dixie Jones to you. And, oh, God, uh, a warrior that's been on, on the battlefield a long time, oh, God, sustain her and strengthen her and uh, be with Deacon Jones, oh, God. And, and oh, God, I, I ask this morning, oh, God, that you would comfort and keep, oh, God, the Durr family and the uh, 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 Brother James and Brother Robert uh, shoulders, oh, God, and all of that family. We, we lift them up to you right now, Lord Jesus. And, God, uh, I pray, oh, God, uh, for Deacon... Uh, Catchings and Deacon Robinson, oh God, and uh, even as they go before tests, oh God, God, I pray that you will work it out, oh God, and, and Master, whatever needs to be revealed, reveal it, Lord Jesus, oh God, and we give you glory for it. And oh God, for all those persons whose names I may not remember this morning, God, I, I, I lift up Sister Burks to you and uh, Sister Janice, oh God, and Sister Shea, oh God, and touch, Lord, as only you can, oh God. God, uh, we ask now that you would dismiss us from this place, but never from your presence. Go with us, stand by us, guide us, and strengthen us. For we ask this, Father, we ask in Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Be blessed and go out in his presence on today. Amen.